Hey, nice people. How are you doing? So, I was thinking this morning when I woke up, there isn't any periodic table for alchemy, so I thought I would make one um, based on what I'm reading in alchemy books. So, I hope you will enjoy seeing how this all works and fits together. How would one go about making a periodic table of alchemy elements? Well, firstly, it wouldn't really be in periods. And uh, secondly, we're not talking about elements, because in alchemy there can be no such thing as an element. Now, I'm releasing this video onto my regular channel for historical purposes, so people can see how the uh, people who built pyramids actually envisaged the world, because the people who built pyramids, I'm discovering, surely used this system. Um, it, it, is, it is a system which is actually based around pyramids, as we're going to, to find out very quickly. Uh, firstly, I want to give you um, some just fundamentals about how it all works. So, uh, how it works is this. So, uh, basically, we're proceeding in terms of evolution of creation. And that's something you notice about alchemy. Chemistry, you can go backwards and forwards. Alchemy, you tend to move forwards from uh, what has been created into simpler substances because you're kind of doing the work of the creator and hence alchemy is seen as divine. So how alchemy works is this, and I've put what we could call chemical elements in cartouches, although you will see there can be no such thing as simple chemical elements, rather substances. So <coughs> let's get started. So <coughs> the waters of creation were the primordial first substance along with God. And the waters of creation are known as the philosophical basilisk, the abyssal water, or the feminine water. And what this is, is essentially the moon, or the female, the volatile, right? Um, think alcohol, think volatile chemicals. And that mixed, uh, and that's also known as the mercury, and that mixed with the word of God, or the vibration, or the slimy earth, which is the sulfur, or the oil, and that is the male principle, and that mixed with a third principle, the, the salt, which is the body, or the code, or the crystal, or the form. It's just an empty body without a soul. So what you have basically is the mercury, or the volatile, or the female, or the chi, the energy, the ka in Egyptian, mixing with the sulfur, which is the oily substance, volatile and oily, the moon and the sun, the female and the male, this one is the, the male, or the soul, or the ba, and then the salt. The word salt and the word solid do seem to have a common origin and mean a similar thing. Uh, you can think, and we are looking at two words which sound very similar, sulfur and salt. It's, it's, they, they both have the root soul. So you can think of salt as past tense of having a soul, an empty body, soul in past tense completed. So I'm calling this one the bar, the soul, and this one, as if, and this is what alchemists accept. I'm not making up this anything up in this video. This is all this is, this is alchemy, and I'm calling this one bar two. But that's the only convention that I'm particularly doing because, again, we're looking at soul, so another body, uh, which is interesting. Anyway, from this equation proceeded the creation of the four elements. And when we talk about elements in alchemy, we're not talking about chemical elements. What happened is that the words in alchemy inspired chemistry, but the words in alchemy mean totally different things to chemistry. For example, in chemistry, we have elemental mercury, which seems to replicate some of the principles of alchemical mercury, but alchemical mercury is applied to every equation which has resulted in the creation of a substance, any, anything that's volatile. And that's been applied to elemental mercury, which is volatile. Uh, sulfur has also been applied to a chemical element, um, but it was more than that, just that, in alchemy. And aside from creating the four elements, which we actually, are not just elements, but I'd like to extend that statement to of matter, states of matter, that directly, that equation, 
that the waters of creation being vibrated by the God, Mercury under a pyramid, by the way, does that sound familiar? This is the pyramid religion. That resulted in the mineral. And the mineral was then exalted into the plant and that evolved and exalted into the animal and the spirit. And until the 19th century, it was thought that the animal chemistry is so sacred that it cannot be done by humans. And then German chemists started doing it. Right? Now, here's the thing. Each of these kingdoms, or, or whatever they are, um, is contains substances which are in turn divided into mercury, the volatile, sulfur, the oily, and salt, the crystal. So what's going on? Right? So um, merc uh, all, all uh, metals are actually seen as halfway between, uh, are actually seen by alchemists as salts of mercury and sulfur. So I've drawn them in between the mercury and sulfur. So the fundamental aim of the alchemists is to try to reduce to as simple form as possible to get purer substances because everything in alchemy is mixed up with these three things. And you want to remove these three things uh, one by one from a substance to arrive at a certain other substance. So, for example, famously, uh, the base metals, the copper, then you get to the silver, you get to the gold, and somehow to get to, to there, you need the philosopher's stone, which might be a salt. So why would, why would having that help you make gold? Well, the answer is you would possibly try to remove the salt. You would try to remove the salt from the, the silver or the other base metal mixture to get to gold. Um, then we have the, the, the oily mineral substances. So all acids are oily. And eventually you get stronger and stronger till you get to aqua regia. So you want to go in this direction. You want to get to the substance you want by following the laws of nature. Um, uh, what is a salt? A salt is a crystal. It's a rock. It, it can purify it into a crystal. It's ash. And eventually you get the philosopher's stone. And uh, what I've done, I've put a little bracket here showing that all the metals, are uh, all of these substances, mercury, sulfur, salt, all the acids are mercury, sulfur, salt, and all the crystals and salts are mercury, sulfur, salt. So, and, and what's happening is I've drawn arrows uh, because you, you want to change this into this. You might get rid of some sulfur. You might get rid of some, some metal. Uh, over here, I've written planetary classification because there's an additional classification where different planets control different metals and uh, so you would go to the alchemy clock see the clock video we made and you would see what time you need to react a certain metal with another metal what time of day what time of month etc etc uh, it's almost like menstruation so then we look at the plant kingdom and what i'm reading uh, in the alchemy books is uh, 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 in particular a uh, uh, handbook of this handbook of plant alchemy um, from this, I think it's from 79 or this one's from 85. It's a very good book. Um, what is considered the, uh, the, 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 the mercury of the plant kingdom is basically ethanol, the most volatile substance. What would some sulfurs be? Some sulfurs would be, uh, plant acids like, um, vinegar, tartaric acid. And then you can purify and, and get the volatile sulfurs, which are the essential oils, the very smelly ones. You keep uh, melting it down, you, you'll, you'll get rid of some volatiles, this arrow here, and you'll get to a fixed sulfur, which is a very oily, resinous material. Or you can get rid of some salt, you can, you, can, you can then burn that off, get rid of some salt, make a more pure substance. Then we get to the uh, this thing, which was not, I don't believe it was really covered by the alchemists, but fundamentally what we can do, the mercury of the animal might be the urea, but eventually the CO2. The, the product of animals, which is very light and volatile. Um, and then, uh, or methane, I don't know. And then sulfur. Uh, what is the sulfur of the animals? Well, it could be that the stearic acids, the, which make the soaps, the oily substances, uric acids, fats. And then we can see the animal also has crystals because uh, proteins can be crystalline. You can crystallize them. So it's the body. Um, so the, the, it's literally the body, which is what we saw up here, that the solid which is just the code by itself without the soul of the sulfur, which is the soul. And you can, you can crystallize even DNA. DNA might be the ultimate of salt.
of the body. So what have we learned from all this? Right. So the alchemy seems to be Trinity based. It's Stone Age, as we saw, it's based on a sacred three. And that makes me really uh, think that it, it's from, from Europe, because in Europe, we've always had the Trinity, um, which was part of the, the, the Catholic religion before Christianity uh, became introduced to, to the Catholic religion, but, you know, uh, back in the days when the Pontifus Maximus ruled the religion and he wasn't a Christian. Every substance is a fractal of mercury, salt, sulfur, as we've seen. Little is pure or it would not exist. Hence, there can be no atoms or chemical elements. The alchemy table proceeds like a family tree in a forwards direction. Alchemy processes uh, are therefore assisting the forward work of the creator. The basic principle of alchemy, it's not making gold as we've seen, it's male plus female plus form plus substance. Mercury, sulfur, salt equals substance. That's alchemy. And you're trying to split these off. And that's what you're trying to do to make new substances. And this was their conception of how it worked. Obviously, chemistry, far superior, a far greater understanding. But you know, this is alchemy. This is their uh, conception. And now I want to introduce something else as a bit of a wild card, which is very interesting. I saw this in... Um, uh, Mr. Pseudonym Manfred Junius's book, and those look a bit familiar, don't they? And apparently, they are two simple calcining furnaces. So, calcining is extracting the salt by turning something into ash, and then you dissolve that, and then you, you try and um, purify that some more. And, and with the the precip with the water, um, uh, the distillate, or whatever, uh, you would try and you would try, well, or, or what is left after you get rid of the distillate, you'll try and grow some crystals and make a very pure salt, and then you'll put it in a jar and you'll look at it and you'll say, Isn't that pretty? And that's what the alchemists do, and they say, Oh, this can cure maybe a disease or something, you know, that's, that's what lots of alchemists do. But why do these look like pyramids, and why do they have a fire in the middle like a pyramid does, according to the name Pyramid? And I thought that's very interesting. So here you have the fire, which, by the way, is the same as the sulfur, acting on the mercury underneath the pyramid, the sacred waters of creation underneath. So do you see what the pyramid religion is? The pyramid religion, something fell on the floor, is doing this equation to create... And I was going to call my pyramid book Center in Creation because you're putting the center of creation in the middle of a country like the, the Giza pyramids. So you're doing an alchemical recipe, the waters of creation under a pyramid, mixing with the hand of God, which is vibrating those waters, shaking them, which is the pyramid on top, uh, the pyre, a pyramid is a pyre, and, and then the form. The form is the intellectual information inside the pyramid, such as the dimensions of the earth. And you are creating a new world of fertility. And I reckon the alchemy, as you see, is fundamentally tied to the thinking responsible for the growth and development of the pyramid religion, which was extinct by the second millennium BC. Cheerio.